Okay, so today we're going to be looking at um, thyroid tumors. So of the thyroid tumors, uh, we have one uh, benign, which is uh, a thyroid adenoma, also known as a uh, follicular adenoma. Uh, then we have a papillary adenocarcinoma, which is uh, malignant. Then we have a uh, follicular carcinoma. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Then we have the medullary carcinoma. And finally, we have the uh, anaplastic carcinoma. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just talk about each one of these uh, individually. So uh, let me just make a line for that section here. So um, let's first look at the adenomas. Now, uh, follicular adenoma, they could be functional or non-functional, uh, but non-functional is more common. Um, now, if it is um, functional, uh, it's much less likely to be benign. So, um, and that's because obviously it's functioning well. So can be less likely to be benign. Okay, now out of these, about 10% end up becoming follicular uh, carcinomas. So we do have a little bit of a movement towards that. Now, uh, let's, let's look a little bit at the pathogenesis. Um, usually it's a mutation in the TSHR signaling system, anywhere, anywhere throughout there. And uh, this is where we get 50% of our uh, toxic adenomas. Um, also, there is such chances where you can get uh, a mutation in the alpha subunit of the GS. And again, you get constant activation. Um, clinically, what do you see? What you're going to see is a unilateral painless mass uh, that's developing you know, uh, over a period of time. Obviously, if it's non-functional, then uh, you, you can be asymptomatic until they're, you know, hypothyroid. And if it's functional, it's going to be asymptomatic until uh, it's hyperthyroid, and you're going to have atrophy of the rest of the. Now, if you would have increased uh, iodine uptake. If it's non-functional. Sorry, if it's functional, you get increased iodine uptake, and you get decreased iodine uptake if it's non-functional. That that would make sense. Okay, now uh, the next one we're going to move on to is the papillary adenocarcinoma. Now this by far out of all the thyroid cancers, malignant ones, uh, this is the most common, uh, almost about 85%. Now, um, it's highly associated with radiation. So anytime you hear a case of radiation, uh, you do want to uh, think of this. Now, um, this can be um, solitary mass, uh, but however, it can also be multifocal. Um, and these can be uh, encapsulated to infiltrated, so you can kind of get um, all you know all different types of spectrums. Now, um, clinically, uh, is gener generally going to present as an asymptomatic uh, nodule in the neck, uh, which is uh, free, uh, mo moves freely uh, when swallowing. So th that's generally what you're going to get. Now, late symptoms, um, it's going to be related to speech, so hoarseness. Uh, you get dysphagia, so it's going to be tough to eat, obviously, because the uh, tumor is compressing it, and dyspnea. Um, now, under the microscope, you get two features which are very, very unique. Uh, one is papillary carcinoma, sorry, somoma bodies. Um, and these are some bodies here. These are made up of calcium. Nobody really knows why uh, they're there. Uh, but this is only found in a few tumors. One is going to be the papillary and uh, papillary adenocarcinoma meningiomas, and also uh, papillary cyst adenocarcinoma of ovaries. So you, you so, so okay, ovarian is one of them. Um, the other thing that you'll see is something called orphan anti-nucleus. This is basically when a nucleus kind of looks empty. So if you look right here, the nucleus is looking white and what is supposed to obviously stain black. So that's going to be 
uh, an interesting feature there as well. Um, how would you treat it? Uh, the treatment uh, for this, obviously, you could do a thyroidectomy. You can do a thyroidectomy. Uh, you can give radioactive iodine, and that, that should kill a lot of the um, tumor cells. And you can also give suppression therapy, which is basically uh, giving uh, increasing T3 so that you can increase, decrease TSH um, as well. Now, the interesting thing about this one is that when it metastasizes to the lymph nodes, it does not change prognosis, which is very, very unique. Because usually, lymph node metastasis is. However, if it metastasizes to the lung, that will change the prognosis. Okay, next one we're going to look at is um, follicular carcinoma. Follicular carcinoma, as far as causes goes, um, it's going to be related to iodine deficiency or just due to a regular adenoma. Um, however, in order to tell, you must look for invasion um, to see what's going on there. Okay, um, morphology. Uh, it's kind of similar to papillary where it could be encapsulated or infiltrative and um, lymph node metastasis is uncommon uh, it usually goes to the lunar bone so that's uh, pretty much all there is for that now medullary carcinoma is um, a tumor of the perifollicular cells which make calcitonin um, you have two types. We, we have a sporadic type, which is about 80% of the time, and we have familial type, uh, which is the remainder, remainder. And the familial type has a better prognosis as well. Um, the familial type is going to be related to a proto-oncogene called the RET proto-oncogene. Okay, and this is going to be related to um, conditions uh, such as uh, MEN2A and MEN2B. So in MEN2A we have uh, medullary, obviously medullary carcinoma, uh, increased parathyroid hormone and pheochromocytoma. Where in MEN2B we have obviously medullary, you have uh, oral cancers, uh, related to the mucosal neurons, and we have pheochromocytoma. So if you notice, uh, MEN2A and 2B are the same, except the parathyroid is not affected, instead the oral is affected. Now just a diagram that helps uh, put, commit this to memory is here, uh, MEN2A, you can kind of display it as a rectangle, and we have parathyroid here, parathyroid here, and pheochromocytoma here, and pheochromocytoma here, and obviously you have medullary here. Uh, and with MEN2B, that's shaped more like a triangle, where you have the oral mucosal neurons here, so this is, this is 2A, and this is 2B, and then you have pheochromocytoma, pheochromocytoma here, and obviously medullary carcinoma there. So that's a nice little way to remember it. Um, you, you will also get some ectopic hormones, uh, that are released. Obviously, uh, you can get uh, calcitonin, increasing calcitonin, and uh, if you don't remember, calcitonin decreases calcium, and you can also get ACTH to get Cushing's. Now, out of all of these, the worst one to get is anaplastic carcinoma. Uh, this is generally found in elderly women, uh, and risk factors here are going to be the multi nodular goat. Uh, multi-nodular goiters, and even follicular carcinoma. Uh, and unfortunately, this is 100% fatal. Uh, and uh, that's usually due to tracheal compression.